Hello everyone, and welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. In this video, I would like to show demonstration on how to download a Kitbash 3D uh, model kit that was originally free. I received a comment on one of my videos that I just posted today, and as was by D. Howard. It says, hello, you mentioned in another thread you might be covering the Kitbash 3D post-apocalyptic mini kit which I have. I'm looking forward to that tutorial when you get around it. And I've promised to do that previously, but I completely got sidetracked away with all these Egyptian pyramids and uh, this other through Kitbash 3D uh, projects. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So what you'll have to do is if you're new to this or if you already have the kit uh, in the account, what you would want to do is download the format, which would be the Blender and the render is native and go ahead and download the kit and it's going to be under Unreal Engine Projects, Downloads and over here we're going to call it what was it called? Uh, Post Apocalypse so we're going to call this Apocalypse City <clears throat> and I'm going to press download if you don't have a blender you can download it into different well, different ways. You can either go to your URL. If you go to blender.org slash download, you can download Blender 2.82a. It's free. Or if you have a Steam account, you can go ahead into your search bar and type in Blender and it will show up right here as well. And this is how I downloaded mine. You can download it right through Steam as well. All right, so I've downloaded this zip folder took me a while <laughs> but all you gotta do now is open up your zip folder create a new folder wherever you'd like to store your project so it's going to be post post apocalypse city you go just like that and then open up your zip folder and then you say extract to Choose the location you want to extract it to, which is this folder I just created, Downloads, and Post Apocalypse City. Press OK. And just make sure when you do download it, it says Blender. And it's going to take a minute or so to download. And the size of it is about 376 megabytes. And once you get that in there, it should be here. And if you look at all the textures, and that's why it took so long to do it, because there is almost, wow, there's 222 textures. Holy crap. Okay. Um, let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this cube. We don't need it. And like I've mentioned in the previous video, just minimize this screen. Bring your file, the native.blend. And then just left click and drag, say open. You don't want to save your brand new um, called level, just don't save. And now it's going to take a while. Oh, here we go. Dropped it right in. Cool. So, the cool part about this, uh, I know you've mentioned it before that you didn't know which part goes with what. Uh, if you look at this project, everything is already set up where it's supposed to go so every mesh is already aligned you don't have to worry about trying to connect the pieces together but if you look at them unfortunately a lot of stuff is combined together as one so there's different ways you can do it you can probably separate them piece by piece if you wanted to so let's say if you want to have this crate uh, unfortunately it's not available as one piece in this tutorial specifically I'm just going to combine them all together as one piece and uh, they're not, they can't be edited in, in a way. What you can probably do, like let's say if you want to create your own new mesh, you can probably select the faces of a uh, particular object and create a different mesh out of this. But I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial. Like I said, I'm just going to connect everything together. So if we're to look at the list here 
I'm going to start from beginning. Oh, you got to go to object mode and then zoom in to selected items. So we have we have cans, concrete, concrete floor, metal. So things like this, like let's say these cans can be probably created as an individual mesh if you wanted to. Uh, let's look what else we have. We have a trailer at the top. Uh, this is a metal plates, metal rust, rubber, which is probably the tires. Yeah, so they're not really individual pieces. So there's the brace. This is, like I said, there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, obviously, one way is to connect everything together and use it as a scene. Or you could probably see if you could uh, separate them all individually and use them for something particular. But in this case scenario, I'm like, I don't even see what would you use these, let's say, Westland wood pieces that are particularly for this door and two windows and nothing else. It's not like separate. And plus, you have something at the top. A uh, very odd way of them putting pieces together, but uh, what I do if I want that to be one set, I just right click and control J to join them all together. So now it's one full piece. The next one is a west building, which is probably, I guess okay, so it's farther out this way. And there's a lot of different pieces here. So if I were to select shift click and shift and left click, select them all. Then again, control J to make it one piece. The third one is the, me uh, the, me the mesh next to it. You scroll all the way to the next folder, control J. Now we have three models done. And again, none of it is really modular because if uh, you look at the cans now, they're all over the place. What I would recommend doing is probably saving it somewhere separate, or you know, or creating a copy of this, and then, so let's say wherever this place is at, right? So you can uh, always copy this material and then drag it out, and then, so you can copy the object, drag it out, and then separate it individually if you'd want to create a particular mesh out of it. That's possible to do that as well. But right now I'm only connecting everything that we have here. So we have buildings, control J, another one up here. So we have a huge scraper, control J again. And I'm closing the folders as I connect them all together. We've got a couple more to go. And I try to center it so that I know what I'm working on here. Next one is this building right here. Control, oh. select them all, control J. Some of them take a little bit while to combine. There we go. Select all, control J. And we've got a few more left, uh, the last one. And that will be over here. Okay, so we have all the meshes connected together as one building. I've already pressed Control J multiple times. So now it's one module piece. Again, you can't really do anything to it where you can go inside the buildings and, well, maybe you could go inside of some of these buildings, but I don't think there's any stairs, so you can go into a wireframe and see if there's any staircases. Obviously, there is none. Again, I think these models are for like more of a movie scenes or animations because clearly not all of this are fully built to where you can have a playable scene. I mean, I'm sure you could add stuff to it it's just a lot of work but they did put a lot of work into it as well creating it this way now you can change between the viewport shading of the solid and material preview so under the material preview and the last video I called it <laughs> pink it's actually more of a, like a maroon color if 
between purple, but I guess closer to a maroon color. And we have all these meshes set up and ready to be built. Now I wonder why this is all dark. Okay, so it has some sort of reflection. I'm assuming that is the glass. So now all these meshes are done. Next thing what you want to do is to go into file, extended data, and then find missing files. And then once you do that, it will open up a new window. What you have to do is copy your location of your texture folders. And what it does is when you click on that, find missing files, it uh, creates a new directory for the D drive. Because if you look at it, all these textures were in a path for the K drive, which is doesn't exist in my folder or on my computer. So you select that folder and it will load up your textures and create a new directory. So that way it will register right here on the bottom. It says uh, no to send it to true. And once you do that, it's uh, going to take some time for it to load up. And it took me about like two, three minutes. And it loaded up all the textures right into these meshes. Uh, like I said, once you detect wherever your folder is, it will come with all the textures that it came with, which is 222 textures. So depending on how strong your computer is, it uh, might take some time for it to work. Now, of course, if you don't, if it doesn't let you do it for whatever reasons, here's a quick demonstration of the blueprints that you can reorganize yourself under shading. There is the all the textures that are listed here. You can change them to your custom textures. So here's a list of all the textures that are not being detected yet. This is if you're doing by hand. And if it's can't find the missing files, here's all your textures. There's different ways that you can do it. Uh, if you uh, find the location of all your textures manually, you can set them up as well. So if you copy your uh, texture name, you can open up a folder and then find the location. So you can copy the location of that folder and then you just say find missing texture and then what it does it replaces the texture and it takes a second to load it up so you can do that that way as well and you don't even need to type in the name of it you just need to do a manual location of the folder and again you don't need to do this process unless it doesn't work the first way I showed you so this is a another way of doing it now also what you can do is if you doing this manually it gets tedious to uh, do this whole process of uh, unwinding all these notes so what you can do is you go to your uh, edit and preferences and settings and you can do uh, add-ons and you can add uh, this uh, note the wrangler node which will line everything up in a straight line so it will break down your textures just like this and it's uh, right here on your right side you can align the nodes in a straight line just like that you can also do like a frame put a frame or a selection for a particular node that you're working on and also you can go to nodes and activate the node uh, arrange and then over here and delete all of this and just keep the notes and go to your arrange uh, what you have to do is just uh, change the margin on your X and it will spread out all your textures so you click on on that and then it will break it down easily for you and then you can go into the folder and paste your folder location but again it's a very long process of doing that manually but it's useful if you're replacing uh, different textures uh, specifically like let's say if uh, well, there's one building that you want to have a different texture or you want to replace a specific texture on the fuse or normal map or glossiness or something like that 
uh, this is what will be useful for but other than that i would recommend going with the first step like i've showed before so yeah that being said let's go ahead and uh, export the project and in order for me to do that all i have to do is just go to file external data and then pack all into dot blend i'm gonna click that that should pack everything with textures and all the models and all the textures is going to be dedicated to each material and each material should be dedicated to all the meshes separately or to dedicate a particular mesh and the name of it is minikit-native.blend okay all right, so I've reopened the Blender and created a new level. And now what I'm gonna do is use the current version that I just saved, or should I say file ex external data when I packed it all into Blend. Now here's the original Blend from the zip folder because if you look at it, it's 376 megabytes. And then also this texture folder itself, if I were to look at how big it is, which is right here, is about 1.15 gigabytes. So if you add that all together, the total is about 1.5 gigabytes. That means is that the blend and the texture folder were completely separate. That tells me that if I were to drop this blend project into here, it will import the meshes and textures all together as one. And I'm going to go ahead and press open. Okay, so it imported the whole project with textures as well. And this is how I think. Okay, so I'm back into my level. All I have to do now is create a new folder. I'm going to call this Apocalyptic City and <clears throat> FBX, just like the rest of them. Okay, so I've shown you before that if you're to share your project, or let's say if you want to reopen it in Blender, you'd want to do external data and then pack all into blend so that way you can reopen this project again in blender with all the textures attached together or you can just do export and then choose the format let's say for unreal engine you'd want to do choose fbx format choose where it's going to go in this folder that's where i'm going to put mine in i'm going to do export fbx so here's my fbx format and i'm going to drop that right into the unreal engine okay just like this and i'm going to create a new folder here as well i'm going to name it meshes don't forget to do that if you're separating them like i do drop it in as I'm waiting for the files to import into Unreal Engine, it actually crashed on me already, so I had to redo it again. But while I'm redoing it again, I want to show you this article. It is done by Kitbash 3D Help Center, or it's under Help Center. And this is how to relink textures. And if you're using different pro softwares, 3D softwares like Cinema 4D or Maya, it says in Cinema 4D in Material View, actually what it says here is that most of the time when you download an asset to your computer for the first time and load up some models in your 3D software, texture will be missing from your scene. This is because you need to let your 3D software know where you saved all the texture maps. Luckily, there is some fast ways to do this. I already showed you how to do it in Blender. Now, if you're using Cinema 4D in Materials view, click Texture, then Open Texture Manager, select all the missing textures, and then click Edit, or Link Textures. Then you just need to select the folder when you save all the textures, and that should do it. 
in Maya it says we recommend using the file texture manager it's free plugin for Maya that will one button will anal analyze oh okay that's so Maya that with one button will analyze all the textures in your scene allow you to set a new path for all of them at once and we're link in less than a minute so you do window generator general editors file path editor select top x resolved and x unresolved uh, press repath files enter new path and then press repath right here and then in 3ds studio max you can do we recommend using this collins center script it's a free plugin for 3D uh, Studio Max that with one button will analyze all the textures in your scene, allow you to set a new path for all of them at once and relink in less than a minute. You can download it here. And also in Blender, open the file menu, then choose, like I've shown you before, external data, then find missing the files and select folder where the image textures are located. The file names have to be same as they are in the Blender file. And then there's some other useful links that you can check out as well. Okay, so this is like the fourth time I'm trying to import this project into the Unreal Engine and I keep getting this crash report. So I'm not sure what to do about it since it's not letting me import this kit into the Unreal Engine, but if you do have a blender, at least you can use it there. And that's all I can say for right now, because I have no idea why it's not importing that kit. I'm going to try with other ones that I have, but I didn't do any different with this kit. On the export-wise for the FBX, so I have no clue why it's doing that. Okay, so I'm not really sure what else I can say about this project at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and try with my other two that I haven't done yet, which is the Edo Japan and Roman Empire. And I'm going to do the same procedures and see what they, how they're going to behave. But for some reason, this kit does not want to get imported into my Unreal Engine. So I might have to do an FBX download for it. Or maybe do a blender download and uh, don't assign any textures and then assign all the textures within the Unreal itself. I'm not sure yet. I can maybe try it that way. But as of right now, in this video, it's pretty much only useful for if you're using Blender. That being said, I just want to thank everybody for watching my YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for all the subscriptions. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel and click that notification bell button to get notified every time I upload a new video. Till next time, guys.